All righty. All right, gang. Uh, so today's topic is nutrition. So as you guys know, I've been um, really focused on just improving my own health the last couple of years. Down, uh, I was as light as 210 this morning after a cheater weigh-in, which is amazing. Uh, I've been kind of fluctuating between 211 and 215 most days. So I'm down well over 120 pounds all time. 340 was my heaviest. I was 210 uh, after my cardio this morning. So I want to kind of go through some things that I'm doing and then kind of answer some of your nutrition questions uh, and a little bit of a challenge of what I'm doing. So basically what I'm doing, I'm doing some sort of physical activity every single day. And I think this is just a good general practice. And I see a lot of uh, our members that are really successful in the group, not just in powerlifting, but in other areas of their life. That seems to be a pretty common theme is they're pretty active people. Sometimes I got to hold them back a little bit, but I do believe that uh, consistent activity is important, and one of the things uh, one of a really famous strength coach Dan John would say is that if it's important, do it every single day. So obviously, you're not going to do like heavy singles, you're not going to have compressive spinal loading in the maximal pa fashion every single day. But there is always something you could do to get better every single day, and some some daily movement, uh, paying attention to your diet, your sleep, your stress levels is going to be really important. So one of the things that I really encourage you guys is to uh, continue to do the daily check-ins, just kind of hold you accountable. Since I'm not physically seeing you every uh, a couple of times a week or every single day, having those daily check-ins are gonna be super important just to kind of stay on track so just so I can get a pulse of how you're doing and uh, and then doing all that stuff. So uh, that's gonna be really important moving forward to be sure to engage, be sure to uh, encourage others to engage. That's going to help support uh, others. So it's kind of like I scratch your back, you scratch mine, and we kind of help each other when we need it. So number one, do some sort of physical activity every single day. Now, you should have some rest days. For me right now, I'm uh, being really aggressive because my goal is by May 30th, I want to be 10% body fat. That's on my um, – so I'll probably grab my, my goals in a second. That's not that important. Uh, but that is something you may want to write down your goals uh, as an anchor. So actually, let me grab that real quick. So I'll kind of show you. So I'll show you these are on my fridge. So these are like kind of my targets here. So you guys can maybe see. So these are very specific and measurable and timely. So they're smart. I'm not going to go into the whole smart goal discussion, but I'm also saying I give myself permission to, just kind of a mental thing. So I want to be under 200 pounds body weight, uh, stage ready, 10% body fat, that's May 30th. Now that may, that show may or may not happen, but I still have a deadline, I still have a date. Just because my circumstances are have changed doesn't mean my goals have to. So circumstances can change, goals remain the same. The path is going to be different, but I'm still working toward my destination. You might have roadblocks on the road, you're going to have to pivot. Uh, you still kind of we're still going to move forward though. And these are my strength goals. Uh, my goal, my my biggest goal is hitting a ten times body weight total. It's something I've been, I've never totaled two thousand pounds in competition, and I want to do that. I will do that in the one ninety eight class. I want to do a ten times body weight total. That's going to be my big overarching goal in terms of powerlifting. So I have very very specific goals. Once I have that, I could just focus more on the process. But it's really important I kind of know where I'm going first. So this is important. It's really important to have long-term and short-term goals. This is more of a short-term goal. This goal is going to help me achieve this one because my body composition is in check. That's going to allow me to make the 198 class and then I could train at a consistent body weight going into that prep. So number one, it's important to have a goal. So we talked about daily movement. So right now my training routine is that I'm doing, uh, I'll kind of grab it. So my training routine, I'm doing some sort of uh, upper body work, uh, about three, yeah, three. I'm doing some sort of upper body work about three to four times a week, some sort of lower, lower body work around twice a week, and then I'm doing some sort of cardiovascular exercise every single day. Mostly low intensity work, especially now that I don't have access to machines. I'm mostly walking outside. I'm going up and down stadium stairs and things like that. I'm getting about 40, 45 minutes or more in the gym and outside the gym. So inside and outside workouts, they're higher volume. So I'm gonna, they're quick, they're short, they're effective. 
and I'm just moving at a good pace. And you guys can see those workouts on YouTube. So that's my training. In terms of my nutrition, um, my, my protein intake is a little aggressive since my carbs are lower to kind of help maintain the muscle mass. I'm getting about 350 grams or more of protein per day. Uh, my carbs are lower on my lower days. I have one medium carb day and one high carb day to kind of replenish the glycogen for the week. So your goals and your macros, we can kind of talk about, uh, it's going to depend on, your, on, on you, and we can kind of discuss that a little bit. The number one thing is you want to track where you're at. If you're not tracking your nutrition, you're not tracking your calories, it's kind of like weightlifting blindfolded without knowing what's on the bar. So it's really important that you also track your food intake if you do want to make body composition changes. If you're kind of happy with where your body composition is at, then you can have a little bit more of an intuitive eating approach. But I do believe that tracking for a period of time, especially these next like six to eight weeks, uh, is going to be really important during this challenge. So for the next 75 days, I'm going to kind of up the ante a little bit for anyone that wants the challenge. This is something I'm going to be doing. I kind of started this already just kind of by accident the last five days since I started doing my cardio outside. So this is a 75 hard challenge. This was inspired by the MF CEO, Andy Frisella. Andy Frisella owns First Form, the nutrition company. He's also a very accomplished entrepreneur, and he has a great podcast as well. Uh, he had MF CEO podcast. Now I think his podcast is called uh, Real AF. So good listen if you guys are interested. So 75 hard is a 75-day challenge that you're going to do these practices every single day. So the first thing is you're going to take progress pictures. Now, for me, this is really important because I need to practice my posing more often. So I'm going to do, for me, I'm going to practice my posing and take screen grabs to get progress pictures. So you're going to do this every single day. It just, again, the point is to have a habit. Do you really need to do it every single day? You don't, but if you want to do this challenge, that's part of it is you're doing it. It's, it's important. You do it every single day. On a more uh, less aggressive challenge, you would only maybe do this weekly or biweekly. Um, but for this particular challenge, the goal is consistency and it's a, the goal is to really get you in the right mindset to show you what's possible. I've done this challenge before and I've failed it. And when you fail it, you have to start it over. It's very challenging, but, uh, it, it really helped build me, build the skills for me to allow me to lose 120 pounds and keep it off. You're going to follow a diet. So that could, that's very vague, but basically you want to have whole foods. The main thing I'm going to require from you guys is get your, uh, your, eat your uh, protein in grams, the amount of body weight you have. So if you're a 220-pound man, you're going to have 220 grams of protein. Now, for someone like us, like Sammy Chu is a little bit bigger, you might want to do your goal body weight in grams. So if you want to weigh 275, have 275 grams of protein. Now, for me, I'm having 350 grams of protein right now because that's what my coach told me, and that's allowing me to maintain muscle mass while I'm in a very low-calorie deficit in terms of carbs. So I want you to, whatever your body weight is, get that in, uh, that in grams of protein. So if you weigh 190 pounds, get 190 grams of protein at a minimum. I also recommend having carbs pre and post workout and sticking to mostly whole foods. But my main thing, as far as for follow, follow a diet, I want you to at least get your protein intake checked. And as long as you're tracking what you're doing, I will give you a check mark there. As long as you track what you're doing. But... No cheat meals and no alcohol during this time if you want to do this challenge. That's what the challenge is. doesn't mean you have to do it, but if you want to step it up and you want to win the challenge, we're going to do this for 75 days. We're stepping it up. Drink a gallon of water. So that's a, I do four liters of water. Uh, this can be hard. So I usually drink one liter of water before and after training. So I knock out half my water early in the day. So there's strategies for that. But we want to make sure we're hydrated. I also recommend having sodium and electrolytes. Again, not required for the challenge, but it's just good practice. I use noon tabs. I use LMT powder. That's going to be how you stay hydrated. Two 45-minute workouts at a minimum. So I'm going to do, you know, so it could be a long, a 45-minute walk outside. It could be a hike. It could be more aggressive if you like, but it doesn't have to be. Just to be moving outside for 45 minutes. Part of that is being in nature. Part of that is getting sunlight. Part of that is just doing something that's a little uncomfortable. The other thing that you're going to do is also uh, do a 45-minute workout in the gym. I will give you one off day, but I want you to kind of be in the gym doing something. Now, if you're doing extreme powerlifting, three or four days of heavy lifting is fine. The other days, maybe you just do 45 minutes of mobility or 45 minutes of accessory training. Uh, like for me, I'm going to do some, I'm going to do a, 
on days where I'm not doing weightlifting, I'm just going to do 45 minutes of light yoga. That'll count as a workout. Just the point is to stay moving every single day. I would do three or four really hard workouts and the rest should be low intensity, something you can do nasal breathing only with. Uh, this is something I need to get better with uh, is reading, but so again, podcast doesn't count. I want a physical book. So try to get something that's important to you, something you want to learn. Uh, I'm, I have a self-help book that I'm going to be working on uh, that I'm excited to dive into. But uh, if you have, uh, have a business, if you're uh, an athlete, if you have, if you're a husband, a wife, whatever it is, try to pick a read that's going to help you toward your goal. Um, it doesn't have to, it could be fiction or nonfiction, but I recommend uh, have it be nonfiction. So it's something that's towards your goal, but some sort of reading, some sort of educational material. I'm sorry, uh, it cannot be fiction. It has to be educational. Again, start over if you miss. Uh, the goal is to get 75 days in a row. If you want to take the challenge, track it, post it in the group every single day. If you're successful and I check off on it and I, and I deem it successful, we're going to give you some prizes. Some other uh, considerations during this time is sleep, stress management, and I mentioned self-help stuff. So you want to also have some fun days. So you want to have some time with your loved ones. You want to have some downtime. You want to be able to unplug. That may mean, go mean going in nature. That might mean spending time with your family. It might mean just Netflixing and chilling with your significant other and just relaxing. Have some time for yourself and your loved one. It's going to be important. Uh, stress management, doing things like box breathing and nasal breathing. I mentioned yoga and meditation and things like that. Uh, being outside in nature would can maybe check off two boxes. You want to keep the stress management low, especially during this tough time. Sleep, I recommend a minimum of seven and a half hours because that's uh, sleep cycles are in intervals of one and a half. But you want somewhere between 7.5 and 9 for elite athletes. Elite athletes closer to nine when you're getting close to a competition. Minimum of 7.5 if you want really good recovery. Five is just kind of bare minimum for like functioning. Uh, to me, that's not acceptable. If you for some reason get up before this, I would just take a nap in the middle of the day to make up for it. It's not exactly the same. Again, this is not required for the challenge, but it's a nice bonus. It's a nice add-on. In terms of prizes, I'm just going to put my money where my mouth is. If you were able to complete this and I check off on 75 days in a row, we're going to give you a $199 gift card to use at the gym. You can use it on your own membership or you can give it to a friend. So anything Gaglione Strength related, it could be merchandise, it could be part of your membership, it could be a gift for membership for a friend. We're going to give you a $199 gift card if you're able to complete the 75 hard challenge. Okay. All right. So, uh, what I'm going to do now is open the floor up uh, to questions. Uh, but again, so we're going to this part we're going to record, and then with the question and answers, we will discuss. If you guys want, we can just do privately because uh, I would do want to encourage people to come on. I think some people are uh, are not. So, uh, I want audiobooks can count, but technically Andy Versella says no. But I think I'll, I'll, I'll allow it if you just kind of show me what you learned. So uh, if you guys, let's actually do this. If you guys have any questions on the challenge first, let me know. Uh, and then we'll kind of go into any nutrition Q&A. So that's, we're going to stop the recording here and then we'll keep uh, rolling. Thank you guys for listening. Until next time, uh, stay strong and we'll see you soon. So you guys can start the Q&A now. We're going to stop.